morning and good evening to some on, uh, on, online attendees. I'm Vivian from Singapore Water Association. Thank you for attending today's behind the scene premiere of the globally acclaimed film Brave Blue World, probably presented by Dupont Water Solutions, Swiss Asia, and Zylan Singapore. This premiere is supported by PUB, Singapore's National Water Agency, in conjunction with the Singapore World Water Day. We are honored to have Brave Blue World CEO, founder, and executive producer, Mr. Paul O'Collegan, to give us the welcome brief. Before we proceed, I'd like to touch on some housekeeping rules. For online participants, please mute your microphone and turn off your camera upon entry to ensure a better connectivity. To ensure to avoid disruption, we reserve the rights as organizer to withdraw any participant from interacting the session. Please post any questions in the chat where we will respond separately in emails. For us like attendees, please wear your mask at all times even when you speak. Please be seated at your seats. Do not mingle or interact at all times. Be safe at a distance. No exchanging of name cards or greetings. Contacts will be given after the event. For today's session, we have Mr. Kuna Shah as moderator and giving us the world opening address. Kuna is the SWA Council Member and Managing Director of Regional Business Development Head of Asia Energy, which is a company, a global leader in organic waste management. Kuna himself is a chemical engineer with over 12 years of experience in the space of water, wastewater, municipal solid waste and bioenergy. Over to you, Kuna. Thanks, Vivian. Good morning. Uh, interestingly, uh, it's a very nice hybrid event. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure to welcome you all to today's um, behind the scene premiere of uh, Brave uh, Blue World, organized by the Singapore Water Association and duly presented by DuPont Water Solutions, Suez Asia, and Xylem Singapore. Today's premiere is organized in conjunction with Singapore World Water Day, and here we are. Um, thanks to all who have dressed in blue um, to support this excellent initiative by PUB, Singapore's National Water Agency. Thanks to PUB, once again, for providing us such a great venue to screenplay the globally acclaimed documentary of Brave Blue World and a 30 minutes panel discussion with our Water Alliance partners to support our members and water companies through knowledge sharing and exchange of ideas and expertise. As you all know, the World Water Day is approaching. Um, I guess you all know that it's on the 22nd of March and this year's theme is very interesting. It's uh, the theme of this year is called Valuing Water. Uh, it means that, you know, uh, how do we all as individuals, as organizations, as utilities value the word water or what water means to people, its uh, true value and how we can better protect this vital source. Uh, today's hybrid event is one such platform whereby SWA hopes to actively engage our member companies in the development of a future ready, innovative and sustainable water infrastructure in the region and globally. A few lines about SWA to all the online and uh, on-site attendees. We started in 2004. SWA has been providing a platform to build effective networking, facilitate opportunities for collaboration, and foster the exchange of ideas and knowledge among member companies. Our mission is to develop a vibrant and dynamic Singapore water industry and the vision to be the regional hub for all water services and technologies. SWA also actively connects to the global water network by setting up Singapore pavilions at overseas trade shows, overseas missions and business seminars. Our current 260 plus member comprise of a diverse mix of local and international organizations, commercial companies, research institutions, SMEs, and startups presenting the services across entire water value chain. Now, we are in a COVID-19, now it's maybe COVID-21, uh, but COVID-19 is significantly impacting our health, lifestyle, business, and the economy. 
as the society and businesses race to reopen, the pandemic has brought fast moving and unexpected variables. Notwithstanding any variables, the quality of water cannot be compromised as it endangers our health and the whole ecosystem encompassing households, agriculture, industry, energy, and the environment. Hygiene, sanitation, and supply of clean drinking water affects everyone, while on the other hand, the, the world's supply of fresh water is depleting. And it is estimated that two-thirds of the world's population will encounter water shortages by 2025, given the current consumption rate and increasing population growth. Singapore, as we all know, is a global test bed for innovations and technologies. International water companies recognize the ready access for testing their products in our water facilities and infrastructure due to the synergy in constructive collaboration and various supports from government agencies and local research institutions. Together with the policymakers, all of us have played and will continue to play a vital role in reaffirming Singapore's commitment to water security and sustainability as a model for integrated water management. Let's come, ladies and gentlemen, to today's screening. So Brave Blue World Foundation is a non-for-profit initiative focused on providing a platform for scientific educational storytelling and public engagement. The foundation was created with a view to inspire a shift in thinking and solving water challenges globally. Brave Blue World Foundation has partnered with many leaders, experts, and technology companies within the water industry to produce the Brave Blue World documentary, which you will see in a few minutes. Brave Blue World explores the technologies and innovations that have the potential to solve the world's water crisis. The film highlights scientific and technological advancements that have been taking place to ensure the world's population has access to clean water and safe sanitation services, and the environment is protected. Uh, it's narrated by famous actor Liam Neeson. Play uh, Blue World features scientists, engineers, activists from across the world, including my favorite actor Matt Damon, co-founder of global nonprofit. I don't know how many of you know that he also uh, owns a nonprofit water organization called Water.org, uh, which is doing a lot of work in the water sector. And actor and musician Jaden Smith, co founder of uh, nonprofit 501c3. Uh, with this, I would like to introduce uh, the executive producer, Paul. Uh, I happen to know him for many years now, personally, who was inspired during his international travels as founder and chief executive of Blue Tech Research. Through many conversations with water utilities, technology companies, academics, and communities, Paul reasoned that the countries whose governments were progressive with water innovation, investment and technology adoption seem to have particularly high levels of public engagement and awareness of regional water supply and wastewater treatment issues. Now, this is very interesting. Paul has long admired Singapore's approach to water management. Um, I think in Singapore International Water Week 2012, Paul was a keynote speaker. And uh, it was the first time he presented the three words, brave blue world. So we have an interesting connect to the movie. Uh, with a desire to change how people think about water and share stories of the pioneers who are carrying out groundbreaking work whilst fast tracking solutions to global challenges, his team of scientists set out a journey to create this compelling water documentary. Without further delay, uh, may I now present Paul's welcome brief. He's on the other part of the planet. So we have him speaking with us virtually. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this screening of the Brave Blue World film documentary. We're delighted to be sharing it with you today. A special thanks to the Singapore Water Association for hosting this, and of course, to our fantastic production partners without whom the film would not have been possible. The Water Environment Federation, Suez, DuPont Water Solutions, Xylem, L'Oreal, and Aqualia. And I'm delighted that many of them are here with us today to discuss the film. I was reflecting on just how impactful my relationship with Singapore has been in framing my understanding and my thinking about water. And I remembered 
delivering a keynote address, a very much younger Paul O'Callaghan delivering a keynote address entitled Bravery World at Singapore Water Week back in 2012 at the Tech Exchange Workshop. So even back then, that idea of a more futuristic, optimistic, hopeful story was, was beginning to develop somewhere in the back of my mind. And it was fantastic that when that idea began to turn into a reality, that one of our very first, in fact, our very first shoot location was in Singapore. And we had the opportunity while we were there to focus in on some of the leading edge work on innovation and technology. We visited the Suez Research and Development Labs and spoke with Vinod about the work they're doing to drive down the economics of desalination and water reuse. But of course, that's really only one side of the Singapore success story around water. And the other story, and perhaps the less told story, it relates to communications, education, and outreach. And somebody had given us a tip to go down to the Singapore National Archives and dig around and just look at how long Singapore has been engaging in creative communication around water. And of course, we found message boards, um, cartoons dating back to the 1980s that were all designed to raise people's awareness of the understanding and the value of water. And certainly for me personally, this is something that's always left an impact on me. Whenever I arrive into Changi Airport and I hop in a cab and I'm on my way into my hotel, I'm chatting with the driver and they ask me why I'm in town. And of course I'll say, oh, I'm here for a water conference, usually Singapore Water Week. And straight away, invariably, they start to tell me all about water. They tell me about the four taps, about new water, about how important water is to the future of Singapore. And I'm amazed at that. I thought if you could ever get to that point where you know, an ordinary citizen, whether it's a child or an adult, has that level of appreciation, understanding, enthusiasm for water, you can achieve incredible things. And I would assign quite a lot of the Singapore success story in leadership in water to that sustained effort on communication and outreach that's been so effective. And really, that was the piece that I felt was often missing when we within the water sector go out and we try to tackle these major problems to innovation and technology. I mean, we have finance, we have technology, we need good policy, but good policy begins with people. You know, unpopular policies don't get politicians elected. And that was where the idea for developing a film documentary that could reach a very wide audience came about. And now we're absolutely over the moon. This film is in 29 different languages, available globally to over 200 million people on the Netflix platform. So far, we've won five different awards for the film. It's being filmed in a host of different film festivals now, including locally there in Southeast Asia, the Kuala Lumpur, Kuala Lumpur Eco Film Festival. Um, so, you know, lots more to do. And uh, we really hope that events like this have to spread the word. So please tell your friends, tell your family about the film. We hope you really enjoy it, are inspired by the stories. And we hope that these stories will inspire others to follow in the footsteps of the leadership that, that Singapore has shown. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I hope you really enjoy the film. So since Salim uh, it's an actually interesting one I, I wanted to ask is that, um, you know, uh, there are so many technologies which we saw in the movie have played interesting roles, right? From water, wastewater, industry, municipal, and, um, uh, and they have also played a good role in supplying 24 seven water. Now, uh, if you can share with us, and if uh, not confidential, uh, DuPont, you're working on various solutions. So could you share with our team here, what are some of those uh, latest endeavors at DuPont, sure. uh, which are uh, trying to solve the water crisis? Sure. So uh, maybe I can share briefly uh, just two uh, recent technologies, you know, that we recently launched. The first one is a dry seawater agro membrane. So I know, as you guys know, you know, Every uh, seawater agro membrane, when it leaves the factory, it has to be tested, wet tested, and there's a certificate. That's the typical industrial standard, right? So we've launched uh, what we call a dry seawater, where it doesn't need any wet testing and still can perform as good as those wet elements. Interesting. Yeah. So so one uh, the, the weight difference just for uh, for uh, brief uh, information, the weight difference is four kg between wet. Uh, which got the preservative solution and then compared to the dry element is 4 kg. 
And you, if you install 25,000 animals in one of the big diesel plants, that's about 100,000 liter difference, or 100,000 kilo difference. And imagine the transportation you require, you know, the saving, right? So for me, 100,000 liter of water saving is about six months, my water supply right, for my family. So that's one. And then the other one is uh, the fouling resistant uh, seawater RO membrane. So, you know, fouling is one of the key issue and how we can help customer or end user to minimize downtime by having a longer cycle. And then we can reduce uh, CIP or cleaning in place by at least one third or 33% at least with fouling resistant membrane. So these are the two new technology that we have recently introduced. Interesting the way you put, uh, you know, like the amount of uh, uh, material saved for transportation. I'm sure it also helps in carbon reduction. Carbon footprint goes down. Um, now coming to you, Pucha, uh, this is first first question was related to the company. So um, Suez is obviously a global player. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have offices in many countries, and uh, there is a lot of focus uh, pre-COVID, I would say, or even five years before, and now more mm -hmm. on digitalization of water infrastructure. So um, how, in your view, uh, digitalization could help make uh, utilities more resilient mm -hmm. to the effects of climate change? Not only the utilities in, let's say, the developed world, mm -hmm. but also in the developing world. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. Uh, it's, it's much easier. Thank you for for the question. I, you know, I think me and my colleagues there, we can speak about the digitalization during hours. I took some notes to 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 share with you. Uh, I think you know digital solutions is about um, first is about um, to increase the knowledge uh, and to be able to share it and then put it in action. If I have to define it in one sentence, this is going to be the the main meaning for for at least for me about digitalization. Uh, but what we do is that we 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 can understand. And I I brought a few examples. We can understand in real time what's happening. In a large scale network um, or resources, and then we, we are able to anticipate what's going to happen, okay, and, and then take take uh, take take uh, take some actions. For example, uh, there is um, we have an offer called Aqua Advanced, which is uh, for for which we, which has been used also uh, in uh, in Singapore and all, many other cities is to uh, to. Uh, Basically, to uh, to to support um, uh, cities to better manage uh, the urban drainage. Okay, uh, they, they I think another one is is uh, uh, digital solutions are also uh, and this is more and more and you saw the the family in Netherlands that they, they 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 want to know how much they spend how much how much water they save how they use it. And digital also is uh, helping um, communities, uh, governments, cities uh, to get closer to, to, to the users, to the population. And this is also something we put in place here uh, in, uh, in, um, uh, in Singapore, where you can know how much you are going to pay uh, in advance, how much you consume, and it's very easy to put in place. That's very Two first examples. Oh, uh, thanks, actually. We all have a new year resolution, so just sharing mine at home. Yeah. Our new year resolution is that when you get the bin from SP Group, it's interesting in Singapore that they show an average in the top community mm -hmm. and then your number. Yeah. So me and my wife decided that we want this graph to go down. <laughs> so that's a new year resolution in terms of saving water. Uh, interesting. So moving to you, Ongjian, um, you are heading Xylem regionally, and uh, we have seen uh, some of the initiatives of Xylem globally. Uh, would you? Show some light that uh, what Xylem has been doing in the region. Uh, uh, in, in business is one, but uh, uh, the other aspect, like uh, helping communities, either providing clean water or uh, helping the city, uh, you know, saving from floods. So, any such one or two cases in the region, what Xylem has been looking at? So, at Xylem, we believe in promoting two things. One is to create, obviously, economic value to in business. But equally important for us is social value. How do we give back to our communities? And we try to instill these values in all our employees to make sure that when we are out there, it's not just the customers we serve, but also the communities. So some examples of what we do. A notable one is last year. If you remember, in Philippines, there was an eruption of the volcano, Mount Kau, mm -hmm. 
that caused severe disruption to the community. So what we did together with our partners, uh, Planet Water, we went in and uh, constructed five aqua towers. That means we get water from the ground to serve the communities, clean drinking water, installed as schools and community centers. We also put in two what we call aqua blocks. These are more emergency units, uh, self-contained. Uh, you can get the water from any source, from the river, from the ground, wherever, and we put it where the action is. So we put in two units there. Our employees mobilized. They went to volunteer in soup kitchens. They raised funds for the on their phone pocket money to donate to the hospital and the community. And they really out there uh, in the midst of things, in, in action. So supporting the community. So that's one. Other examples would be we work with another NGO, Mercy Corps. And when disaster strikes like there's flooding or earthquakes in, let's say, Indonesia, uh, through our partners and our funding, we go, we go in and provide relief, uh, blankets, lighting, uh, water bottles, whatever. Whatever that can sustain the community in this emergency situation. And then longer term, we construct towers that give them the uh, long term supply of water. So this will be some examples of what we do. Interesting. And, uh, you know, we could talk about CSR. Corporate social responsibility. I think uh, the water sector in general is a CSR. So we get to do CSR work at the same time, of course, making the bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, now, this were the company related questions. I, I want to make it a bit more personal, if you're okay, uh, informal. Uh, so, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> we go in the series. So, uh, you know, you, you, you come from varied sectors. Uh, and uh, if I may say that you are relatively uh, three years into the water sector. Uh, what are your impressions about the sector and uh, how, how do you feel in the water sector? I think one of the reasons why I'm here is I wanted to do something meaningful and real in my career, something that you can see immediate impact on the communities and what more. What, what is the real uh, essential thing for life and what we see in the things we do day to day is really the impact on the community. So that's number one why I'm here. Second, in terms of the people and the skills, it is multidisciplinary because you look at the solutions, it's anything, right? It's from mechanical pumping solutions, it's biological processes, it's treatment, membranes, materials, UV, and now we're talking about digital solutions. So at the machine level, at the subsystem, at the whole solution platform level, uh, a lot of things uh, people really need to know and to master it, to be able to then offer a solution to the customer that really touches on the key challenges that they have. So again, not an easy sector to be in. I mean, the solutions may sound easy, but actually when we put it together as a system, that's, that's where the trick is. And that's where I think uh, the industry is providing a lot of value. And then I think thirdly in terms of uh, impact, uh, you hear the phrase, uh, let's solve water. The other phrase that we like to use is opportunity of a lifetime. And to explain that, as you heard in the movie, is that the technologies and the solutions are already there today, that we can solve the challenge. It's more about how do we mobilize our government's policies and energies to get things moving. And that's really uh, something that we can do in our lifetime. And that's the big opportunity. If we can, together as an industry, work together and push and get things done, that would be really something that we can all be proud of in our lifetime. So that's that's very much uh, driving me, and I'm sure all of my colleagues when we uh, work in this sector. Interesting. I think we got an ambassador for the water sector, which we can use. I think it's very interesting for all the people also, the youngsters also watching, that the sector gives you an opportunity to really see what you're doing. Um, uh, moving with that, uh, Prachat, to you, uh, from relatively new, in the water sector to 25 years of the water sector. Uh, how, how, how have you seen uh, 25 years ago and now the water sector transforming or changing? What are those some changes which you see? Obviously on the positive note, uh, which you would like to share with us. Well, first, thank you for reminding my age. Uh, no, let me, let me, uh, let me, uh, when I started to this uh, to get to actually I started the, I started with Shred 25 years ago and I started the, the first steps was in was in the waste business, which you know was the other part of of Suez. And at that time I was just freshly come out coming out of university and business school. 
all my uh, alumni's, they, 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 they all wanted to go to L'Oreal, they wanted to go to, uh, to Nokia, they want, no, and I was the only one switching to, to, to going to this business, which was not as, as glamorous as other other businesses. Now they all want to come to, to Poland. Yeah. So, so I made the right choice. So this is something I wanted to share to, with you. And second thing, I think there are many changes. Uh, you know, I have been visiting, uh, I didn't count, but uh, over at least 20, 30 different countries for, for Australia. I have been based in many different countries for, for the company. Uh, the, the main things which has changed is first, uh, the, the, the level uh, of knowledge of our clients, small, big, all over the world uh, on technologies and the request, the level of requests they have. Uh, they, maybe 25 years ago, they would say, okay, you know, give me something simple. Uh, don't talk to me too much. How much is it? And is it simple to, to, to do? Today they want to know. And then the example you gave for membrane is 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 is, is a very good one. Uh, they want they want to know they want to have the latest one immediately, uh, not the the the, 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 the all stuff. So this is the first thing which has changed. Second thing which has changed in the past ten years. You know, 25 years ago, we, we, are already, we were already speaking about sustainability, but it was at the last page of the presentation. Yeah. Said, by the way, uh, uh, not, not everybody, I think, you know, I, 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 I was visiting L'Oreal uh, factories in France uh, in eight, late 90s. They were already very advanced compared to other uh, companies, um, but not everybody. I think what is changing today is that when you when you go to meet a client for the first time, the first meeting, you, you speak about sustainability, and they ask you, "What are you doing? Are your solutions sustainable?" And and, and it's not it's not just the cherry on top of the cake. It's a, it, it's the element uh, just helping them to decide. And I come back to your to your example. I think today uh, this sort of innovation can change can change the decision of a, of a client uh, to to go this way or that way. Interesting. So, like we all uh, uh, expect and wait for the new version of the iPhone or the new version of a car. Mm -hmm. I think similarly, what you said is that the customers are wanting to see what is the latest. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be left behind. And that's a very interesting thing that things are changing and sustainability now becomes like part of the cake, mm -hmm. you not know, the cherry on the table. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Prachan. Alim, uh, you worked in a few, um, uh, how we say, uh, technology companies, uh, product companies, uh, Gramtech, uh, Sulzer, um, and the point from now, right? Uh, as as global conglomerate, and we see a lot of uh, uh, the sustainability leader was on the call. Um, how do you see that uh, besides the dollars at the bottom, um, does this whole thing of sustainability uh, is 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 part of your entire thinking and DNA process in Dupont, basically. And, and as a person, uh, what is keeping you driving after 18 years in the water sector? So thanks for this question. I think it's very interesting also uh, to share with the audience. You know, uh, when, when I look at um, career or, or industry that the first one to focus on, there are three main things that I look at, right? The first one is, uh, like what uh, Pro said as well, uh, do you solve problems? But you solve a big major problem that we are facing now. So that's the tick the checkbox. If it's water scarcity, yes, it does. Second one is uh, do you like the work itself? Right? You know, be it the the actual work that you're doing and the people, the team member that you're interacting with, right? Do you like that? So I, I'm very fortunate to work with a group of um, very passionate team members in Dupont. You know, every time we get together, we always try to solve customer problems. So that's where innovation comes in, right? So we always think, you know, how can I reduce the energy from a customer, right? The pumping energy. How can I reduce the replacement rate? So we have membrane that can that has been operating for 13 years without replacement, seawater RO membrane. Right. So these are the things that we uh, you know challenge ourselves. Can we last longer? Can we reduce my chemical uh, frequency? Such a question, right? So that's the second one. And the third one is of course uh, Moving forward, you know, when you choose uh, an industry or a career, does it pay well? Right? You, it's got to be solving a problem, a big challenge, and you've got to like what you're doing, 
and then it's gonna pay decently well. So it keeps you motivated, right? right? So these are the three things you know that uh, keep me going uh, day in day out. Although we have a uh, great challenge in front of us, and then moving forward, uh, you know we have a team that's so passionate to solve problems. Thanks, I think that was interesting. Um, we then how much time do we have for should we conclude or uh, five minutes? Okay, so I go for an uh, impromptu rapid fire kind of a thing. What in fact World Water Day is coming? So, uh, would you want to give a message uh, on the sector of water uh, or a general message uh, on the water sector for uh, for the common man in the room as well as on online? Uh, if you sir. Um, so I would say for Zylan, we have launched a program called Ignite. Is really to ignite the passions of our youth to really care about issues of water and do something about it. So I encourage all of you um, in your own capacities, if your family, friends, relatives, students, whoever you can reach out to, to similarly ignite that passion within all of us to really solve this problem. And if enough of us do that, as you can see from the video, then things will start to change, things will start to move, and that's where we get the movement. So that would be my message for everyone. Thanks. Uh, so Ignite is the word. For sure. I think uh, I, would, I would say do, do at least one small thing, as you said, you know, one resolution. Do something. Do something. Yeah. You be you, me alone, I cannot build an Orange County plant, but, but uh, yeah. uh, I, 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 I do things at home and I teach my daughter. Uh, today she's three and a half, but I, 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 I when she's brushing her teeth, I said, you need to turn off. Then when you want to wash, you turn on. And last time she came to the bathroom, I was washing my teeth. She said, it's open, close it. <laughs> so I think we, we have to do small things. So this is my message as an as a, as a individual to you, do small things. And it works. So I would say charity begins at home. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, walking the talk is uh, clever. Mm -hmm. I think how about you? So maybe on the individual level, I think the message would be, you know, everyone plays a part, right? So I think I echo what uh, I said just now, you know, I have a boy at home. And uh, whenever he is in the toilet for more than five minutes, I will, I will come and look at him at his screen. <laughs> and more often than not, he's uh, playing with water. Or brushing his teeth, but the tap is on. Or taking a longer shower than required. So I will always remind him, uh, please note that you know water is precious, especially in Singapore. Right? And then I will talk about all the pressure on that and all that. But he still doesn't get it, but I will keep drilling until he get it one day. So everyone plays a part. Interesting. So self discipline is uh, another way. Uh, yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, we saw some interesting views of individuals. Uh, you saw the movie. I think, uh, you know, we'd like to thank everybody who was here in present. It was nice to see people, right? Uh, uh, people outside the home. And uh, it was uh, thanks to all who have joined online. Uh, thanks to these companies who have uh, sponsored uh, the, the preparation of this movie. Um, uh, I would say, as for Chat, uh, I've also watched this movie the second time today. And uh, I would encourage everybody to show it to your kids. And so on and so forth. We are not marketing the movie, but it is all about creating awareness, creating the, the, the igniting the factor that it is a fine value resource. And let's, let's do something about it. Uh, World Water Day is coming. So if everybody of you uses uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, just post a simple message. You are in the sector, uh, like how you value water. You can even go to the website of World Water Day and even TV is conducting a lot of events in this whole week leading towards the World Water Day. So you may be able to contribute in a way or the other. With that, uh, thank you again. And thank you all three of you to have a nice uh, panel discussion. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, panelists. And thank you everyone for attending today's seminar. I hope you have a uh, enjoy and especially the great panel discussion with our four panelists. Thank you, sir. So we are we'll presenting our post events today on these events. Those who would like to further contact our families as well as a uh, call to the lender, please give us or indicate your interest in our post event survey form. Thank you very much.